How's it going everyone? Welcome to another video on SMTFX. In this video we're going to be covering the swing playbook which is our take on swing trading. Right, so I'm going to be covering the swing playbook and Chris will be covering the scalp playbook mainly because I started out trading a swing strategy and I've basically been specializing in it and uh, mastering my craft with it. So I'm going to be covering the swing playbook. Now, what is the swing playbook? The swing playbook in SMTFX is our specialization and our take on how we trade swing trading. So what we're going to cover is basically the step by step process on how we um, analyze our charts using a swing method and how we take our entries, our TP targets, trade management. And I'm also going to cover the last thing is what kind of people fit this playbook? What kind of people can trade swing? Or do you, I'm trying, you're trying to figure out whether it suits you or not. And I'm going to cover a few things that might help you understand whether it suits you. And so, yeah, let's get into the video. So let's start from um, how I look at the charts in a swing perspective, right? So when I look at the charts from a swing perspective, usually what I do is I mark the most recent price action, right? Just mark it up with a zone, you know, gives you a clear idea of what you're looking at and, you know, no distractions, right? So let me replay because this is a mitigation I'm going to be using, for example. So on Cadian, what you usually do, I'm going to use Cadian for this example. So in terms of a swing play, we want to look at a few things. So you notice how I've put this up here. This is basically the criteria we have for marking up um, supply and demand zones that are high probability, right? You could mark up a lot of supply and demand zones, but sometimes those supply and demand zones don't hold. Then you might be wondering why aren't they holding, right? Which is why we have this rule based strategy where we give you all these rules that you follow to have a much higher win rate in terms of the trade you take. So let's have a look at this specific price action. We have um, a few points here. Now, usually when I mark up my swing strategy um, charts, there is barely anything on the chart besides one zone and maybe a few lines. That's all. Um, there isn't any markups, there isn't any write ups, nothing. Um, I like to keep my charts clean when I trade with swing because it gives me a better idea of what I'm looking at. So in this case, you have a very clear supply zone here, right? So we're going to mark up the supply zone. And what do we fit all these criteria? We have a chalk over here, right? You can mark one here, you can mark this one here. There are a lot of points you can mark at chalk. You could even mark one here. So we essentially fulfill a lot of these different swing points uh, for our chalk. And what you might realize is this swing point. So if we use this, for example, as our chalk, I'm going to put this on as well so you have a clear understanding of why I'm marking that up. And this indicator helps you mark up all the right um, points swing points for your chalk as well. So looking at this, we have our chalk here and with our chalk, you realize that this can also be considered a break of structure because we're using a similar swing point. So when you ha usually have a chalk, you also always have a break of structure. That's a point to note um, and something you can go and look at your charts and you'll find out that that's basically what always happens. Now, what do we look for next? We also want to look for a liquidity grab, right? Now, this is optional for a higher time frame zone. You don't always need a liquidity grab for higher time frame zones. For our entries, you want to see a liquidity grab because that gives you confluence that price is moving in your direction and there's enough volume slash momentum in the market to push you towards your take profit target, right? So we've got our chalk, we've got our break of structure, and in this case, we also have a liquidity grab to grab liquidity from all these areas over here. You can see how price is basically... Um, it's almost like a liquidity pool because we've been buying, selling, buying, selling, buying, selling. There wasn't any real movement to the upside or the downside until this point. So this whole move up basically grabbed all the liquidity from here because these are all the orders stacking here. You can see the stacking because of the range that has been created here. We haven't moved anywhere. We've been stuck in that area, right? So we've got liquidity grab. So I'm going to mark up with just one dot. Liquidity grab there. We have also have a very clear demand zone failing here. So I'm, I usually don't mark this up, but I just, I'm just marking it up to show you how I do it and how to visualize your trades. So we have our supply zone that we want to take a trade off of. And we also have, you know, 
demand zone failing, we've got chalk, we've got break of structure, we've got liquidity grab, we've got everything you need to wait for your trade to trigger or look for when to take your entry. So the next step we're going to be covering is how do I take my entries? Now, what you wait for is a mitigation of this zone. So you've got your mitigation there. Sorry about that. Let's move back. You have got your mitigation here. So what we're going to look at next is we're going to dive into what this looks like on the one hour, sorry, the one minute and identify how we can take our entries in that point that we're looking at the one minute time frame. Let's have a look at where we can take our entries and where it would be the best and most optimal place to take a trade. Right. So looking at this point here, right, as price reacted, let's just go back to when it was going in. There are a few places you can take your entry right now. One of the places you can take right to have a sort of better idea of what's going on with the market. You want to look at this indicator, right? We've got higher highs being created, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. That tells me that, OK, no chalk has been spotted yet. We're still bullish in this area. We have this impulsive move, which is a great indication that price may come back to clear this imbalance left behind. So what we want to see here is we want to see a liquidity grab, a chalk, a demand zone failing in this case, and then we basically look for an entry. Now, I'm not I didn't include break of structure because at this point, when you have a chalk, you also have a break of structure. So let's have a look at this point. Right. So on the one minute. You want to use the one minute mainly for looking at your supply and demand zones failing. You can also take an entry on the seconds to have a much accurate um, entry. But in this example, I'm going to be using one minute purely because it is a bit more easier to take your trades and you won't have such a tight stop loss, for, especially for our new members here. So this is a demand zone we're looking at, right? We can tell that this is a valid demand zone because we had wicks, wicks. What are wicks? If you look on the 30 second time frame, that's a reaction, right? We reacted off of this, pushed up, reacted off of this, pushed up, right? So wicks are basically telling you that, okay, this is a valid demand zone because we're reacting off of it. So we want to see this demand zone fail because if this demand zone fails, we're going to basically get a chalk and a break of structure both, right? So this basically is our chalk if it happens. And we also have a liquidity grab. Now, why is this a liquidity grab? Liquidity grab is essential because usually what people try to do is as soon as price taps in the first time and you see a rejection people are like oh, I'm gonna put a trade here because I want to catch it so whenever we're looking for trades we want to see more than one tap ins when I mean tap ins is a tap a reaction a tap a reaction a tap and a reaction right all these taps and reactions basically tell you how price is moving and on every single rejection you see, there are people entering, entering and entering, right? That's a great indication of where liquidity is and why this is considered a liquidity grab because we've basically cleared out all the orders from people entering short here because they wanted to enter in the market, or take the trade early without any additional confluences that we basically teach here. So we have liquidity grab, we have our chalk and we have, sorry, don't have our chalk yet. And this demand zone hasn't failed. So we want to see this demand zone fail. And boom, we've got another proper liquidity grab from this area. Right. A lot of people might be like, oh, why is this liquidity grab? Liquidity grabs are usually when you see price shoot up and boom, you see a wick down. That's essentially telling you that we've basically um, soup all these areas here and we've re basically reacted really quickly. When you see a reaction that quick. That's when we class it as a liquidity grab because price won't just go up and then slowly come down. That's not liquidity grab. When a liquidity grab happens, price moves very fast. It reacts immediately. So in this case, you can see that this is our new um, liquidity grab and we basically want to wait for demand zone to fail. Now we have our demand zone failing here, right? Demand zone has failed. We also have our chalk. So what do we look at now, right? Now, what caused this demand zone to fail, right? And if you guys watch the video on wick refinements or order block refinements, this would be a zone I would be looking at, right? And I'm not going to be using this. I'm going to be using this one. Yeah. Now, what is this blue line? The blue line is um, the 25% mark of this zone because I like to take trades off the 25% mark, not the 50% because I find myself missing trades when I take it off the 50% mark. So I usually don't take that. Now, how does this look? How does this wick look like on the lower time frame, even lower, right? I'm not going to be 
trading the 30 second time frame solely but this is basically um you know just for you guys to understand what i'm marking up right as you can see this was the last buy candle before the push down which is basically our cause for this demand zone to fail right so what do we have here we have our chalk we have our demand zone failing we have our liquidity grab and we have our break of structure so what's left now all we all that's left is to take an entry so let's take an entry here right i don't know how this is going to turn out if it even if it fails it's fine because that's part and partial of trading right you might miss your first trade you might lose the first one and then the next one you you might get it right so this would be where i would put my trade so let's forward price um and see if we get you know proper reaction off of it so we've almost tapped in we've tapped in and we've reacted off of it you can see that this is a bit of a slow reaction and now we've what happens when price is pushing away from that trade what do we do now this is where i explain management first so how do i manage my trade now if you want to be a bit more um, aggressive in terms of managing your trades as soon as price breaks a swing point here immediately stop loss to entry right and then if it breaks here you push your stop loss you keep your stop loss at entry and with swing trading it is a very um i would say if you manage your trades really well you can secure profits if you trade a bit more like me i usually keep stop loss to entry all the way and wait for it to hit my take profit target because i'm confident that it's usually going to hit my take profit target from all my experience of trading swing so now you can trade you can basically set your stop loss to entry once it breaks this point or this point right so that's basically trade management how do you manage your trade whenever it breaks these points you can start going okay boom we've broken this broken this now that's telling me that we're bearish now right we're turning bearish right so the next bit i'm going to cover is how do i set my take profit target now the simplest thing to do with swing your take profit target will be the next swing point. We have a very small swing point here, but this one is significant and so is this. So you have two targets here that you can choose based on how long you want to hold your trade. And these points will be met, will be met because if we are reacting off a strong supply zone, then we're most likely going to break that point, right? So let's look at price at this point, right? I don't know if this trade is going to follow through, but this is where I want to set my take profit target so let's follow through with price you can see it broke through right so this was the first trade that was lost right but because price broke this point right i set my stop loss to entry so as soon as price broke this right we have our first break stop loss is set to entry so i basically lost nothing here right so we have this first trade that went down and this was a place a lot of people might have entered Right, that's cool. It's fine because when you take trades like this, you're bound to lose a trade. There is no guy in the trading industry who's taken every single trade that wins. You always have to lose to win a trade. That's just part of the industry. It's just how trading is. So that's something I want to show you guys as well. I could, you know, record a video and show you the best trade and the most winning trade and go, yeah, the guys, this is how it's done. But that's not the reality of trading. The reality of trading is you might miss your trades, you might lose your trades, and you might even absolutely go, I don't understand what I'm doing. And it's fine because trading's not easy, right? Which is why we're here to ex explain things and show you the reality of trading and not give our false hope that every trade we take is a winning trade because we take losses as well. Okay, so let's go back to the video and let's look for another trade, right? Now that we have this reaction, we want to see what price is doing. Um, we have another chalk here and you could consider this a liquidity grab because we did sort of wick it and react off of it and we grab liquidity from this area All right so we have another chalk here and we also have our demand zone failing how do i know this is a valid demand zone because we have a wick and an immediate reaction from there so we have another chalk here right and then we have a reaction here now what caused this candle to break we're gonna probably look at either this zone here this last one or just mark up the one with the inside bar as well right so a bit of a wider zone and we can basically look at what happens with price this will be a tad bit more aggressive but if it works out it works out right 
but we still have price reacting to so I'm just gonna jump time frame up and you can see that this is another demand zone so I'm marking all these up so you can see what's happening if you have this demand zone and we might see price yeah we did see price react off of it so we had an immediate reaction of price and we basically broke it now let's look at the one minute did we close below it we barely closed below it so I wouldn't really look for a trade yet right so you could if you consider this broken a lot of people might be trapped and take a trade here because you have all your entries met here you don't really have a liquidity grab at this point so if you took a trade here you would have lost it but you did get a reaction off of it so we want to see this um, zone being broken um, properly you see a lot of wicks now because we're still reacting and respecting it right then you have this zone that I marked up, which is basically where I would have taken my trade. Now, why would I take my trade here? On the two minutes as well, I realize I have a shitload of time frames here, and it might get a tad bit more confusing for you. Why did this zone work out? Why was there a good reaction off of it? This was an inside bar, and usually in inside bars, what lies in them is a range. You had this range here, right? So what would I do here on the one minute we're not drop we're not gonna drop to the 30 seconds because I want to explain something you can see that this specific candle what it reacted to is straight up into this now if you mark up the 50% of this inside bar you might notice that um, let's change this to 0 0.5 Oop. there we go and you can see it reacted almost exactly to the 0.5% mark. Um, yeah, almost, right? However, that's what happens when you basically mark the 0.5 is you might miss your trades, which is why I usually mark up 0.25%, so a 25% mark, and I take my trade off of it. So in this case, the trade would have been this, right? And then have your stop loss right above this. Now, 1.5 pips, pretty decent you don't need anything lower than that you don't want to go like oh one pip stop loss guys it works for some people but I don't always have a one pip stop loss unless I'm taking a trade off the seconds but in this case I'm not gonna drop down because this is a great example of how to take a trade just using the one minute because before you look at the seconds you want to master how you take your trades on the one minute right same thing we've got our trade here what we want to see now is I want to see a break of this swing point to tell me that look we're actually gonna break this and continue down so let's move price again and let's have a one a look on the one minute we have broken this point right we have broken this swing point so what am I gonna do I'm gonna put stop loss to entry so I'm just gonna put a um, let's put a red line there so you guys can see um, how it moves so we've got that red line make it a bit thick so stop loss to entry is set now oh, Let's move price a bit more forward. You can see, boom, it came, took me out, and then we, we basically have price pushing down. Now, this is basically how swing trading is. You take your trades, you might miss it, and if price ranges about like that, it usually always happens. What is the best part about this? The best part is we basically have break even on both trades, so we lost nothing. Now you might be thinking, Neve, why do you keep tra taking these trades? Now with swing trading, you know, you never know when the move's gonna be. If anyone tells you that this is when the move's gonna be, they're absolutely lying to you. Let's move on with how price moves again. You can see, boom, impulsive wick up, and that was um, the second reaction, which basically swept a lot of the liquidity um, that was resting here. So what happened here? Price has moved all the way down and we seem to be getting some sort of a reaction here. However, we got a reaction from this point, right? So we basically broke this. We have our demand zone failing. This is an inside bar as well, so pretty high probability. You can see that we wicked it and got a reaction. Now we want to look at what was the cause for that break. So we've got two points to look at, right? First point is this massive inside bar here right we have a beautiful inside bar and we're going to be marking up the whole thing for the sake of the one minute right so in this case i would be quite comfortable um, with this 
obviously the stop loss is much bigger on Cadian, so this would have probably been you could use a 4.5 i'm pretty comfortable with how tight it is here because if this inside bar is broken you could expect price to break through and continue up and maybe mitigate this point right now trading is all about probabilities right you might get this point which is the decisional block that broke this zone or you might get the extreme point which is over here or even this point right because this was the course i'm favoring this because this inside bar is much clearer and cleaner right now i'm gonna move it just a tad bit lower and have this at five move this down so that we don't miss the trade or anything else um, this is something I usually do with something with a trade this big with a candle like this I have it a bit lower so I don't get so my broker actually taps me in and I don't miss the trade so let's have a look um, I'm gonna go to the five minutes just so it's a bit quicker in terms of how price moves and we'll see how this trade goes now we had a bit of an inducement first and then we will have our mitigation at this point so we had our mitigation here Alright, so I'm going to move trade here. I think it's just about here. Yeah, there we go. So this was the trade. It's just about here. Yeah. So we had our mitigation here. Now, again, five pip stop, much bigger than usual. This is an example where you see something like this and you might not get a very small stop loss. However, you look at these trades, 1.5, two pips, you might get setups like this that are much clearer now. Because this inside bar is huge, I'm going to still take this trade and show you guys how it works. So 15 minute time frame. Let's have this a bit bigger and let's look at where we can set our take profit. All right. This is a lot more convincing because we actually have reacted and broken down a lot more impulsively. So we have a take profit target here or you could even target this point all the way here. Now, for the sake of the video, I'm going to be targeting this point um, and we're going to be basically seeing how price moves. Um, we drop to the 10 minutes. So I can show you how we can manage this trade. Now with Cadian, I remember this trade because it was quite rangy until this point where we actually got an impulsive move down. Now as soon as price breaks this point, right, immediately I'm going to have stop loss to entry over here. So market is red. And boom, stop loss to entry. So we're safe. We've got no more risk on the table. And we're pretty um, safe now so we continue price you can see how it still moves down and boom we have our take profit hit all right so this was a 14 hour trade now this trade 14 hour with five pip is still immensely good because how long did it take to hit it right so let's have a look it took about you know 13 hours to hit that now a lot of maybe scalpers they might get this immediately and if you sort of have a perception right if you think about it what happened if these trades actually worked out right now if these trades worked out um, at this point if we sort of set them exactly where our take profit was the trade would be running at 41 hour right now it's unfortunate that these didn't work because we had this immediate swoop here but if you had a trade like this which is something we usually see then you would be hitting 40 percent 50 percent trades easily because you are catching the top of the move all the way down in this case we didn't hit 50 yard of you know huge numbers but this was basically how the swing trading method works how the playbook of swing trading works so what do we target right we target these swing points and if we close the, close the chart go back to how price is actually moving this original target over here i'm very confident as soon as the market opens on monday tuesday um, price is going to break through and smash this area here and this would have been a 21 hour and we had if we had this original move would have been a 60 hour trade right usually when i take my swings the average risk to reward i get is about 30 hour um, i would say 30 hour was something that i used to hit quite often right so that's basically how the entries are taken now management i shared with you as soon as the you get a clean break of structure, stop loss to entry, and you let the trade run. Now, I don't really like trailing my stop loss because more than ever, if you had your stop loss trailed here, you could see this wick here, boom, took you out, right? If you had a trade running all the way here, this would have taken you out and you would have lost the trade. So you wouldn't lose it, but you would not get as much um, profit from that trade. So guys, this is my take on the um, swing trading, our swing playbook, the specialization that we have in SMT. 
um, which is basically how I trade my swings. Now, more than ever, you might get some trades like this. Um, you might get a lot of scalings as well, which is another completely another video that I'm going to be making to explain how to take scalings um, and continuation trades essentially, because at this point you can see this wick mitigated this zone here. So this would have been a scaling trade to take down. But I'll be covering this in a completely another video because that would be a um, deeper understanding of how to take scalings because people might be randomly taking scalings from a lot of places and we don't want that happening in the group. So guys, this is how the swing playbook works. Now you might be wondering, Neith, how do I know if I fit this sort of trading, right? Now, if you're the kind of guy that, you know, you're quite comfortable with catching the top of the move, um, you might be a bit busy, you can't scalp, um, you know, during the day because you might have a job or might have to take care of kids, this method works perfectly fine. Now, I don't have to take care of kids because I don't have any kids. Um, I don't have a job as well because trading is what I do. So why do I swing? I swing because it allows me to have a lot of time for myself, right? A lot of time to focus on the group and help my members out. Um, swing trading lets me enter on the top of the move, hold my trades, and I still hit hit decent amount of profit. Um, how often do you take swing trades? Now, because we're taking higher time frame mitigations, these mitigations don't happen every single time, right? So you see how this zone here, this supply zone was created, our mitigation took place four days later. So there are times where I'm waiting for my mitigation and I don't take trades, and that's completely fine, because why? If you master your swing trading, you can still take scalps within those days. So whenever I have more time to myself, I take scalps as well, just like how Chris does and a lot of our members do. So scalping works as well. With your 5R fixed targets that Chris has, those work immensely well. So guys, this is basically the swing playbook. Um, I hope you have sort of understood how this whole concept or playbook works, how we trade the swing way. If you guys have any questions, um, if you want to feel free to drop me a message about this and I will be happy to answer any questions you guys have. Have a good one, everyone.